Prisons are designed to house the world's most dangerous people and keep them separated from the rest of society. And while prison breaks are rare, never underestimate what people are capable of when they work together. Today, we'll be taking a look at the top 15 most ingenious prison breaks. Number 15. St. Jerome Detention Center Starting off on our list is the St. Jerome Detention Center in Quebec, Canada. While it may not have ever been the subject of a movie or show, this is not the type of place you want to end up. And that was exactly the case for two convicts, Danny Provençal and Benjamin Houdin Barbeau. In March of 2013, they decided that they had enough and were ready for life on the outside. Luckily for the rest of us, the entire escape attempt was caught on the penitentiary's security cameras. What started out as a normal day at St. Jerome ended in absolute insanity when a helicopter landed on top of one of the buildings of the facility. A rope was dropped down to the convicts and their two-story climb to the helicopter began. And whether or not one of them shouted, get onto the choppa, is still up for debate. But that's exactly what they did. Only it wasn't the most glorious of escapes and parkour masters these men were not. But after a few minutes and a few attempts, they could be seen dangling from the rope as the helicopter made its ascent. But, alas, everyone involved was caught, and it turns out that the famed helicopter was stolen. And Provençal, Houdin Barbeau, and their two aerial accomplices were caught and sentenced to 16 years in prison for their little stunt. Number 14. John Dillinger Easily one of the most famous American criminals and bank robbers of all time was John Dillinger. And while that may be an odd claim to fame, he really made a name for himself up until his capture and imprisonment in 1933. Just because you get sent to prison doesn't mean that crime ends within the walls, because John Dillinger met some real knock-around guys who were there smuggling guns into the prison. Oh, and he only waited four days before deciding to get out of Dodge. The plans were most likely in motion before Dillinger even showed up, and while his prison buddies first left without him, there was no way they were going to leave him there all alone, so they came back for him. But instead of causing a big scene with an even bigger standoff using the smuggled guns, his prison pals dressed up like correction officers from the Indiana State Prison and walked right in like they owned the place. And they managed to walk out with Dillinger. It was easy as pie. That is, until he was caught a year later and sent to Crown Point Jail, which had garnered a reputation for being escape-proof. But Dillinger found a way out. He carved a fake gun out of wood, used it to take 17 hostages, and walked right out again. Smart guy for a hood. Number 13. Alcatraz The famous prison island of Alcatraz housed some pretty big names back in its heyday and probably has plenty of stories within its walls. But there's one in particular that really stands out, so much so that they turned it into a movie. The story of three prisoners daring to escape from Alcatraz has become more famous than the place itself, and it's now a pop culture phenomenon. It all started with three prisoners, Frank Lee Morris, John Anglin, and Clarence Anglin, who one day had had enough. And so on June 11, 1962, the three inmates made a break for it. It all started with something as simple as a spoon and some serious ingenuity. The three men started digging a tunnel through a concrete wall, which, as you can imagine, took a pretty long time and even more secrecy. But what would happen when the guards noticed they weren't in their beds? Morris and Brothers Anglin fashioned life-size dummies out of paper mache and put them in their beds each night while they dug. No one was the wiser. And in the meantime, they had been stealing raincoats, 50 in total, to build a makeshift raft. The three managed to get out of there, but that still meant braving the treacherous water surrounding the island. But no one knows what became of the trio, as they were never seen again. Number 12. The Texas Seven as we've seen so far, escaping from prison is by no means an easy feat, and something so extreme can often call for extreme measures, and the case of the Texas Seven was no different. This escape was a little less subtle than those digging a hole. The Texas Seven was, well, a group of seven men, mostly lifers, who cooked up a pretty elaborate escape plot. First off, they took 16 people hostage, which included corrections officers, supervisors, and even three other inmates. From there, the Texas Seven stole the credit cards, IDs, and clothes of the prison employees so they could drop their whole prisoner look. Four out of the seven stayed behind to radio other guards for help, giving the remaining three a good distraction so they could take over a guard tower, steal weapons, and a prison truck. Eventually, every single one of them was able to get in the truck, unfortunately at the cost of a police officer's life. But karma will always get you in the end, because all sorts of law enforcement were on the lookout for them. 
When a woman saw their faces on an episode of America's Most Wanted, she gave them up in 2001, and SWAT team captured five out of the seven, all of whom were put on death row. Number 11, Frank Abagnale. Frank Abagnale's story is so sensational that it was turned into a Hollywood film, with Leonardo DiCaprio playing him in Catch Me If You Can. But Abagnale's story is truly stranger than fiction. The man was, for lack of a better term, a career criminal and a con man starting at the age of 15. He had a few stints in prison, but his most famous is easily his escape in 1971. Abagnale was being transferred to prison by a United States Marshal, but the Marshal forgot to give the prison Abagnale's detention commitment, so he used that snafu to his advantage when he convinced the prison guards and administration that he was a simple prison inspector sent by the FBI. He even used the prison phone to call a friend to ask him to forge a document for him to help prove his story. So when his buddy showed up with the card proving that Abagnale's imprisonment was just one big misunderstanding, they let him out. As simple as that. The escape was more of a release, albeit under some pretenses, but Abagnale's story didn't end there, as he found his way back to prison just four years later and was serving his time. Number 10. Parkhurst Prison When you're doing some serious time, you have just that, time. Inmates spend their never-ending days differently. Some read books, some find God, but Andrew Roger, Keith Rose, and Matthew Williams used their time memorizing the outlines of the prison keys while they were locked up in the United Kingdom. All three of them were working in the prison's metal shop, and as you can imagine, had access to all sorts of tools. If used the right way, they could eventually help in their escape. So while they were taking extremely careful notes of all the prison keys, they were also creating a 25-foot steel ladder and even a gun. But the most important tool in their workshop for these three inmates was easily the key-cutting machine. Andrew Roger was a welder before coming to Parker's prison and used his expertise to make a master key that could open just about any door in the prison. That's exactly what he did in 1995. But no good deed goes unpunished, and the three escapees were all caught three miles away from the prison just five days after escaping. Number 9. Pascal Payette Pascal Payette was a pretty bad guy, having the book thrown at him a few times for robbery and murder. He's not the type of bad guy that you root for. But he made some pretty daring escapes in his time nonetheless, all of which, believe it or not, somehow involved helicopters. His first escape was on October 21, 2001, when some of his buddies still on the outside managed to hijack a helicopter and land it right on the prison roof where he'd been waiting for them to whisk him away. But the criminal always returns to the scene of the crime, and that's exactly what he did in 2003, only this time to bust out three more of his buddies from the same prison. But Payette was caught again in 2005 and hit with a 30-year sentence. But he wasn't about to wait that long, so he concocted the same plan as before, and in 2005 his friend showed up in a helicopter to break him out. Number 8. El Chapo If you've been alive in the last 10 years, then there's no doubt that you've heard the name El Chapo thrown around quite a bit. The Mexican drug kingpin managed to escape prison twice, the first time with a little help from the guards. After a few solid bribes, the prison guards agreed to stash El Chapo into a laundry cart full of dirty clothes and wheel him right out. He was then recaptured in 2014 and just 17 months later made a much more daring escape than hiding in some dirty undies. El Chapo's cell was under constant surveillance, but there was one blind spot by his personal shower. And underneath the shower was a 33-foot deep tunnel complete with lights, air ducts, and held together with construction materials. And when authorities finally went looking for him underground, they even found a motorcycle down there. The tunnel itself was a pretty tight squeeze, but led El Chapo to a construction site not even a mile away. It's pretty unlikely that he dug the tunnel himself, but it's safe to say that he at least rode that motorcycle all the way down. Number 7. Choi Gap Bak In 2012, Choi Gap Bak was arrested for robbery charges in his home country of South Korea. Choi had been doing yoga for 23 years, but probably never guessed that it would help him out of this tight spot. After just five days, Choi managed to weasel and squeeze his way out of the food slot in his cell door. The slot itself was less than 6 inches tall and about 17 inches wide. Wow! And it was reported that he was able to get out of there in just 34 seconds. Double wow! Once the story got out, he naturally earned the nickname Korean Houdini from journalists. 
too bad for Choi because he was caught only six days later and thrown back in the slammer, this time with a much smaller food slot in the door. But who knows, maybe a yogi somewhere will name a position after Choi. How about the prison break? Number 6. Ronald Silva Drug trafficking is pretty serious, and rightly so. It isn't taken lightly. But when drug runner Ronald Silva was sent to a Brazilian prison, he thought a little differently. and He wasn't about to be locked up without having a say, and boy did he ever. He actually concocted a pretty simple plan to make his way out of the joint without drawing too much unwanted attention. Silva had a wife on the outside who would come once a week to visit him, but she brought some pretty unusual gifts with her each time. Women's clothes. So what was their plan? At some point, Silva had accumulated enough garments to make up an entire lady's outfit. So one day, he shaved off all of his body hair and put on fake nails, a wig, one of his wife's outfits including high heels, and a little bit of lipstick. So needless to say, the dude looked like a lady. He walked right by the guards, out of the concrete walls of the prison and onto the street like it was nothing. Nobody stopped him because nobody recognized him. But it turns out one guard thought he looked a little funny and tailed this newly beautiful woman to a bus stop before catching him. So how'd he know? Well, it takes an awfully long time to walk in high heels properly, and the less than natural gait of Silva was a giveaway in the end. Number 5. Clinton Correctional Facility The Clinton Correctional Facility in New York is the state's largest prison, and no one had managed to escape in about 170 years. But two convicts on the inside, David Sweat and Richard Matt, were more than happy to take on that challenge, seeing as how prison life can be pretty rough. They had made pretty good friends with the prison tailor, of all people, and sought some help from him where they could. First off, the tailor was able to get his hands on some hamburger meat during a visit, but the real treat within the meat was the hacksaw tucked away inside. So when the coast was clear, he handed off the bloody hacksaw to Sweat and Matt, who carved right into a large pipe and set out to make a set of maze-like tunnels throughout the inner workings of the Clinton Correctional Facility. But like mice going through a maze looking for cheese, the two prisoners were able to pop out of a manhole on the outside in Denmora, New York. But to sweeten the deal a little bit, Sweat and Matt left the guards a real nice note reading, Have a nice day. Number 4. Walker County Jail this next one is for all the peanut butter lovers out there. Twelve inmates in the Walker County Jail in Alabama proved in 2017 that sometimes the best solution is the most simple one. The twelve inmates were able to escape using just peanut butter and blankets. How is that even possible? Well, first off, the prisoners smeared a good helping of peanut butter on the sign of a door that led to the outside. Then they asked one of the guards to open the door for them. There was no exit sign over it, so what's the hassle? So we let them out. It's really as simple and maybe even a little silly as that. The prisoners climbed up the fence and tossed their thick blankets over the razor wire, letting them cross over easily and safely. They were free, all thanks to something that just about everybody has in their pantry. But just as you'd expect, the escaped cons were caught. Eleven of them only made it twelve hours on the outside, while the twelfth was found a few days later in Florida. So if there's anything these guys did prove is that crime doesn't pay and that peanut butter really does go well on just about anything. Number 3. Red One Fade In France, Red One Fade was sentenced to 25 years in 2010 when he was convicted for a robbery gone wrong that ended in the death of a policewoman. He was a criminal who deserved what he got, but he didn't agree, which is why in April of 2013 he escaped from jail for the first time. Faid managed to use explosives to blow five of the prison doors right open and bust out of the joint altogether. But unfortunately, he used hostages to make sure that he couldn't walk away unscathed, and that's just what he did until he was arrested a few weeks later in northern France. But then in the summer of 2018, Faid was able to attempt fate again when he made a second escape. And like some others on our list, he enlisted the help of a buddy on the outside to hijack a helicopter and force the pilot to land in the prison courtyard. And it worked. They picked up Vaid and got out of there. Shortly after landing, they hijacked a getaway car and took it to a shopping mall, set the car on fire and rendezvoused in another getaway car. It was an elaborate plan, yes, but not nearly enough to keep Vaid free. He was caught again three months later with his accomplices. Number 2. Michel Vajour It's always important to remember to eat fruits, even when you're in jail. And in 1986, Michel Vajour and his wife used fruits to help him bust out of the joint. Oh, and another helicopter. 
it seems that air is one of the most preferred forms of travel when it comes to breaking out of prison. So Miss Farjour took pilot lessons while Michel painted nectarines to make them look like grenades, and he used them to force his way up to the roof of the prison where his one and only was waiting for him. They landed on a football field and hoofed it the rest of the way. Michel and his wife were eventually caught during a robbery attempt, just adding to their heavy rap sheet. But just think of the life Michel Vajour could have had as an artist. Number 1. Yoshie Shiratori Despite having been to prison four times, Japan's Yoshie Shiratori hated the place, which is probably why he was so good at getting out of there. The man had four successful prison breaks under his belt, dubbed the man no prison could hold. Shiratori was sent to prison for robbery and murder in 1939, but three years in, he was able to pick the lock of his handcuffs using a wire from a bucket. He was caught three days afterwards and sent to an even tougher prison. Only every night he climbed the walls of his cell to loosen the air vent above, and when it finally came down, he was out of there, only to be found and sent back to a prison in a remote locale in northern Japan for the worst kinds of criminals. So how'd he do it this time? Every morning the prisoners were given miso soup, which he would spit onto the doorframe of his cell door. Over time, the salt and moisture of the miso corroded the doorframe, so during a wartime blackout he was able to dislocate his own shoulder and slide right out of there until he was caught again. But this time he was sentenced to death and placed under 24-hour surveillance with six guards on him at all times. They even made a special cell for him in his new prison. But the guards had so much faith in his special cell that they never bothered to handcuff him. Big mistake, because he was able to remove the bolts from the floorboards and use his bowl to dig his way out. He was a free man for years, but the stories say that he turned himself in eventually. But this time, he was given a 20-year sentence and released on parole in 1961. He was able to live out the rest of his life until he died of a heart attack in 1979. His story is so legendary that one of the prisons that he escaped from made a monument to him. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.